So we'll go through core types. The very first type of core uh, that we've ever used for um, orchestral instruments is gut core. Does anyone know what the gut core is made of? Yes? Was it cat full shape? It's not cats. Um, there, there is a, a word cat gut um, that has nothing to do with actual felines, um, but is actually an old word that um, is, it, it means gut, like intestinal material, but it is, doesn't have anything to do with cat. Um, the actual first, um, the animals that we used are the are sheep, you're right, sheep and cows. Um, and it really depended on how much material we'd need for the, for the strings. So shorter strings like violin and viola could be made from, from the shorter intestines and the longer, uh, longer strings would need like longer intestines. Um, it's, it's kind of a very intensive, kind of gory <laughs> process because the material needs to be cleaned um, and dried and cleaned and processed. And it's a, it's a very time intensive process. Um, it, it takes a very specialized uh, uh, facility to do so. If you get a chance, you can actually look up on YouTube um, some videos about, of, of gut processing for strings. And it's really fascinating, but I don't, uh, I recommend not to watch right before meal time. <laughs> so it is um, <clears throat> first known, <clears throat> excuse me, the first known string material. Um, we've been using gut for all sorts of things for thousands of years. Uh, pretty much anything that required any sort of a string-like um, form, like a suture material we'd use gut for, um, for any sort of twine, um, for the, on the violins, the little loop that holds your tailpiece to the body of the instrument. Um, that's commonly known as the tail gut because it was actually made out of gut. So, um, you know, we, we'd use it for a long time. Um, Gut is an organic material, so it's very complex. It's quite dense. Um, imagine our own flesh. It's, it's very complex. It's not a, not a very simple uh, form. And it has a lot of malleability to it. It's very, it's soft, it's flexible. What this does for the sound is it creates a very complex, dense, flexible sound. And so generally, what happens is the type of material that you use to make the core often defines what type of sound you end up with in the string. It's sort of like the foundation of a house. So if you have you know, a very um, complex foundation with a, you know, a lot of room for growth, you can have a very complex house on top of that with a lot of room for growth. If you have a very limited foundation, you can only have a very limited house on top of that. So this is what, oh, last part about gut cores is that it has what we call very high damping. Um, we'll talk about damping a little bit later in the presentation, but damping is a really, really important uh, quality to strings that are bowed. Uh, it's not particularly important for other strings that are plucked or strummed, but incredibly important for bowed strings, and I'll talk about what that is in a little bit. Um, this is an image of what a gut core looks like. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit maybe hard to see on the screen, but. It looks basically like a piece of plastic. It's a um, white or off-white in color. And it's just kind of a flexible plastic looking cylinder. So the next type of core we'll talk about is the steel core. So in around the um, late 1800s, um, agriculture was on a steep decline. And um, people started to look at different types of alloys and different metals to um, to work with and to use as um, use for functional reasons. Um, so I'm going to ask one more question, you guys. Does anyone know why a violin E string is tuned to that specific violin E? Anyone? I've got a quiet bunch here. Yeah. Would it snap if it's any hot? That's right. Yeah. So if you had um, a gut string, but th this very specific to gut. So if you had a pure gut string, the violin E pitch was a, as high as you could tune that string without it consistently breaking. And so there are many stories of, of you know, well-known performers and, and concertizing musicians that would go on stage with extra gut E strings because they were almost guaranteed to break one in the middle of a performance. Um, so when steel came along, obviously steel is very strong and very resilient. Um, the E string was actually the first string that people started to try it out on. Um, and to this day, we actually still use, uh, for the most part, solid steel core E-strings on violins. So <clears throat> steel 
is a very simple material, right? It's really, it's hard, it's, you know, it's metal, there's not much complexity to it, it's not very soft, it's not very malleable, it doesn't have a lot, it's not, it doesn't have a, any variance in it, it's just a basic piece of steel. What this does is it creates that equivalent in its sound. It's a focused sound, it's a clear sound, but it's not very complex, right? It's also, however, very durable and resilient, as I mentioned. So that's going to, that's a, a big benefit of steel, and so people kept it around. However, it was very, very different from gut, and people really liked the gut sound because that's what the original violin family was created for, created using gut strings, and it had that warm sweetness that people missed. So while people used steel strings, they really were still looking for other um, replacements for gut as gut became harder and harder to get over time. And this is a quick picture of the solid steel core. You can just see it's just a cylinder of steel. <coughs> All right, so as people were searching for different um, substitutes for gut around the 30s and 40s, 1930s and 40s, um, people started to experiment with man-made fibers as the textile industry actually boomed at that time as well. So people were looking at um, different types of plastics that could be made into fabrics and made into threads. And so um, one of the things that we came up with was using bundles of synthetic fibers for violin strings. Um, this is slightly related to um, the classical guitar synthetic fibers. Like, if anyone play guitar here? Classical guitar or steel string? One! Woo well, classical guitar strings are not like um, orchestral uh, synthetic strings. Classical nylon strings are just like, they're like one strip, uh, one cylinder of nylon. So it's almost just like a plastic cylinder, a long plastic cylinder. Um, so it's not the same exact thing as what we use for the uh, orchestral strings, which are what we call multi-filament. That means many, many little filaments in there. It's the, clo the closest analogy is um, the, uh, like dental floss. If you take a piece of dental floss and you start pulling it apart a little bit, you'll see there's lots of little fibers in there. That's a multi-filament. It's also a synthetic multi-filament. It's not the exact same thing, but it's related. So the great thing about synthetics is because we design them, we make them, we know exactly what we want to make, and we can, we can alter them to fit our needs. So we could make them very elastic or non-elastic. We can make them um, you know, stiff, not stiff. We can bundle lots of little fibers, or we can bundle a few thicker fibers. We could really do a lot of different things with these plastics. And um, because of that, we actually ended up with a, a quite diverse uh, variety of synthetic core strings. And these days, if you look at synthetic core strings, no two sound the same, like no, no two brands sound the same, even though they all might be called synthetic core strings. They all have um, variances and variances in their core type. So the other um, benefit of synthetics is that uh, it is, because it is uh, plastic-based, it is much more um, resistant to humidity and climate changes than gut. Um, gut, if you can imagine, is, you know, because it's an organic material, it absorbs and releases um, humidity like crazy. It's just like, like us, you know, if we, if we go into a dry environment, our skin dries up. And conversely, if we go into a humid environment, it gets kind of bloated. The same thing with those strings. With gut strings, if you go into a very dry environment, it might become very brittle. And if you go into a humid environment, they might feel very soggy. So synthetics had that attractive quality that they didn't fluctuate wildly like that. Also, because it was more flexible and much more elastic and much more malleable, um, you could get a much more diverse and malleable tone quality than steel. So people really, really took to this, and, and these days a lot of strings are made out of synthetic cores. This is an image of the synthetic core. See the, the white fluffy stuff on the left? So the last variant of gut types is what we call stranded steel core. Um, stranded steel core is simply very fine strands of steel that have been woven or braided into a cable type formation, um, or it's sometimes called a rope core or a twisted core. So this is a technology that's um, very simple, but it's related to a lot of other steel twisting technology, like um, uh, the ropes on your synthetic uh, ropes on your synthetic ropes on your suspension bridges, the big, great big cables on the suspension bridges. Those are simply twisted cables. Uh, made out of steel. So what this offers us is a little bit more complexity than just a solid steel core because now you've got all these little 
threads working together, and a little bit more elasticity as well, right? You've got the strength of steel, but a little bit more elasticity. And this is what the stranded steel core looks like. It's this part on the left. And this is an image of the stranding machine that we use. It's a very, very big machine for what it does. It's actually from the end of that bench over there to the end of that counter over there to about here. Um, it's a kind of tubular machine. And um, what happens is we load all of the strands of steel along that tube inside. And a strand from each of those spools is pulled off and then spun into a cable. Anyway. I have a question about yeah. synthetic cord. Sure. Um, at the Dario, is it the same type of material? Like there's just one type of nylon? or, or No, there's different many types. Of nylon? Yeah. There's many different types because we can alter the, um, the qualities of any of these materials. Um, for example, our Zyx strings, we have a Zyx type core. But there are many varieties within that. So we can have a more elastic Zyx core. We can have a uh, thicker Zyx core. We can have thicker um, actual filaments of Zyx or thinner actual filaments of Zyx. So there's many, many varieties. So even within our Zyx line, we use different Zyx cores for each one, depending on what, uh, what that instrument needs and what that uh, player field needs. And if it was more or less elastic, mm -hmm. what's that going to do to the sound? So elasticity is really, really important to um, the tonal spectrum. The more elastic a string, the more a musician can do with it, the more you can kind of push the sound or contract the sound. So um, if you want to be more expressive, you want a more elastic string. If you just want more volume or just more resistance, you might want a less elastic string. But if you want more complexity of sound and sort of a wider palette of color to play with musically, then you want a more elastic string. The downside of having a really elastic string, however, is what? It just keeps stretching and stretching, right? So if you have a really, really elastic string, it doesn't settle in very well. It doesn't settle in very quickly and can be quite unstable. So we have to, as string makers, find a nice balance between having a good elasticity and having good resi resilience.